Hi, welcome back to another halfway serious guide covering all the careers in Vermintide 2. Today we'll be looking at one, and might I dare say the most fun, of Saltspire's careers, the Bounty Hunter. The Bounty Hunter is Saltspire's second career and specializes- Hey, you, yeah, you, watching this video right now. Are you tired of pesky specials ruining your Vermintide 2 runs? Are you sick of hearing- Or maybe you're tired of listening to... Maybe you even get flashbacks to the Great War when you hear... Well guess what, just kidding, you don't have to guess because I'm about to tell you about a brand new product designed to obliterate those specials, called The Bounty Hunter. Warfire? Toast. Assassin rat? Ejected. Repressed memories of wartime atrocities? Well, we can't get rid of those, but the rattling gunner? He's dead. For the small price of your compatriots having paranoia and knowing that there is now an ally in their game that can 100 to 0 their entire health bar with the press of a button, you can be clear of these nuisances throughout your entire Vermintide 2 runs. When did I lose my health? Oh, I shot you with my health. <laughs> The Bounty Hunter is the most fun career in the game. This is not up for debate. Sorry, guys. Does he excel at teamwork? No. Is he a strong carrier with mobility or damage to outplay or demolish hordes of AI? No. Is he the best career in the game? No. Now you might ask yourself, how can a career be the most fun in the game without an innate ability that allows it to carry? See, the fun of playing Bounty Hunter isn't from being the best, it's from ridding the world of vermin in Northlander filth, but not just any filth. You are the Vermintide 2 version of the dude guy. You don't go around bothering to kill every little pinky you come across, that's child's life. You're there for the strongest among the pack sworn. Your one goal is to rid the Reichland of specials and bosses. You are not prey to the elites, you are their hunter, the bounty hunter. But to explain what really makes you the bounty hunter, we need to dive into Vic's kit, so let's get into it. Vicky's first passive is called Blessed Shots. Saltspire gets guaranteed range crits every 10 seconds. Now you might think just on hearing every 10 seconds that this is kinda trash. Sonny, you've never been so wrong in your whole life, but we'll get to that later. Just keep in the back of your mind the foolish and heretical thing you just said. Victor's second and third passives are really just to make sure that you realize that he's a ranged character. Salt Spire gets 50% more ammo and reloads 15% faster. Okay, now with the career skill. Double the discipline! Huh, that was odd. Anyway, the skill is called Dead Not Alive! What? Why does that keep happening? The skill is called Fall oh, Foul oh, Abomination! Oh, for Christ's sake, the ability is called Vicky's ult is called Locked and Loaded. When you press your career skill key, and excuse my language here, you pull out the 9, the piece, the motherfucking glicky, and ass blast whatever the fuck is in front of you into the next goddamn game. There are 18 career skills in the game, and this is the best one, no contest. I cannot explain the power you feel when you press the F key to pay respects to whatever poor son of a rat is in front of you, pull out the glicky, and just... <laughs> okay, now for the talents. For the level 5 talent, I recommend using... Titaker? Titty Taker? Titha Taker? Tethaker? Anyway, kills give temp health based on the slain enemy's health. It kinda sucks since you're ranged, so you could go blood for money, which gives you 2 health for every melee headshot and crit, and doubles that for every critical headshot. But both of them seem to have the same output, so it's up to your style. TLDR, if you like range, go tit, he, taker. If you like ranged and melee, go blood for money. Okay, now for the interesting stuff. For Daddy Dube's level 10 talents, you can pick between Open Wounds, 
Crits cause enemies to take 20% increased damage for 15 seconds. Steel Crescendo, when you empty your ammo, you gain 15% attack speed and power for 15 seconds, i.e. you go berserk for 15 seconds when running out of ammo. Or Weight of Fire, ranged ammo pool increases ranged weapon power by 1% per available ammunition. In Caveman Speak, the more ammo you have loaded, the more damage you do. I personally like Open Wounds, it works really well with the crossbow, which is the ranged weapon I recommend you take. I don't like Steel Crescendo because it doesn't play on your strengths as a ranged character and you need to run out of ammo to get the full use from it. Weight of Fire is good for high ammo weapons like the Brace of Pistols but not for the crossbow since its ammo pool is literally only one arrow. For level 15, take Assassin because you're ranged. Don't even think about it, just do it. For level 20, you get the choice of either Blessed Combat, <gasps> Melee strikes make up to the next six range shots deal 50% more damage. Range hits make up to the next six melee strikes deal 50% more damage. Melee kills reset the cooldown of blessed shots. In short, hit some melee, then shoot some shoot, and back and forth. Cruel Fortune reduces the cooldown of blessed shots to six seconds. Or Prize Bounty, shots affected by blessed shots consume no ammo. I like Cruel Fortune because it works better with the trait you take for the crossbow later on in the guide. Prize Bounty is also really good, but a little overkill for the good old crossy. Blessed Combat is also really good if you like more of a back and forth playstyle between ranged and melee. For level 25, you have the three choices of either Rile the Mob, Ranged Crits, Grant and Victor and his allies, 10% additional movement speed, Salvage Ammunition, killing an elite while out of ammo restores 20% of max ammo, melee kills also reload one ammunition into your weapon. Job well done, killing an elite or special grants 1% damage reduction until the end of the mission, or resetting if you die. While the mob is okay for teamwork, and dual action is nice if you, again, like the back and forth play style, but both pale in comparison to the daddy of all bounty hunter traits, job well done. Oh my god! Job well done is an amazing trait, if not one of the best in the entire game. Sure, the damage reduction is nice, but that doesn't even compare to the dopamine hit you get straight into your monkey brain when you get that one shot on the special or storm vermin. This is the one talent that truly makes you feel like a bounty hunter. For level 30, you have two really good talents and a fucking meme. Just reward, range critical hits reduce the cooldown of locked and loaded by 20% once every 10 seconds. Double shotted, locked and loaded now shoots two bullets in a line. Headshots reduce the cooldown of locked and loaded by 40% for each bullet, up to a total of 80%. Indiscriminate blast, locked and loaded becomes a cone of pellets, kind of like a shotgun. For each kill with the pellets, increase the amount of pellets in the next load, up to 20 additional pellets, or 30 in total. Okay, just reward is good, alright? It's not bad. 20% of your career skill every 10 seconds, when you already have guaranteed crits, not bad. Double shot is, is definitely the best though, it's no contest. This is the thing that allows you to completely obliterate bosses. If you have a purple pot with you and start blasting the boss in the face, you can get like 8 ults off, which is more than enough to kill any regular boss and deal serious damage to big bosses like Burger Spice Hay Bale, Nurgle Goggles the Beefcake, and Death Rattler. WHY WON'T YOU DIE?! And with Indiscriminate Blast, I don't even know how to describe this talent. Oh wait, yeah I do. It's trash. Seriously though, this is only good for hordes and maybe patrols. Otherwise, it just removes the range from your ult and allows you to kill the less dangerous enemies in a more spectacular fashion. It does feel pretty good unloading a fully charged ult into a horde though. That fact cannot be denied. For your melee weapon, I recommend taking the old trusty axe and falchion. The bill hook is, as always, a good option if you like the special stagger it has. The rapier is also good, just because, you know, fun gun. I recommend the bog standard attack speed and crit chance properties with slift slang. Don't want to get too creative here. Okay, now for the range weapon, and there is literally only one choice. The one and only, the one true pairing, the best goddamn grill there is, the crossbow. So there's a couple reasons to take the cross. One, high damage and armor piercing, which also takes advantage of the guaranteed crits you have every 10, or six with the talent, seconds, for even more damage that also retains damage over distance. Two, if you take Scrounger, you get two ammo back on every crit. Now you'll recall, earlier in the video, I told you to take Cruel Fortune, which reduces your guaranteed crits on your passive to every six seconds. 
Now let me throw some galaxy brain think at you here for a second. If you take Cruel Fortune, that's two ammo back every six seconds for the price of one, assuming you hit something anyway. But if you take Prize Bounty, that's two ammo back and save one ammo. Okay, now since I know you didn't click on this video for math, basically two ammo for one or two ammo for none. Now, two ammo for none on the surface sounds better, but I don't know about you guys, but I rarely have problems running out of ammo in my Vermintide 2 runs, especially on ranged characters like the Bounty Hunter. Also, with Cruel Fortune, you nearly half the cooldown of your guaranteed crits. Huge TLDR, take Cruel Fortune. Okay, and finally, the third reason to take the crossy. Normally, the crossbow takes a while to reload, and you have to do it after every bolt. But with your increased reload speed, you're actually getting more out of your passive than with other weapons. Since the reload speed for the crossbow is so long, and they compensate it by giving it higher damage that retains more damage over more distance. Okay, and finally, for the attributes, you want to take power versus armored and crit power, and then obviously you take scrounger, which was discussed earlier. The necklace is really up to your preference like with most builds. I like health and damage, reduction versus AOE, and a healer's touch. For the charm, you want to take power versus armored and crit power. For the trait, I recommend decanter because of how well purple pot works with your ult. For the trinket, take CDR and whatever else you want. Probably curse resist, and for the trait, it's really dealer's choice. I like shrapnel by myself, but it may be unnecessary if you take open wounds with level 10. And that's the build. Sorry this video took me so long, I'm also gonna have to take a couple months break here for a little bit, which is unfortunately out of my control. I'm gonna try to have another video ready and set it to premiere hopefully sometime in March or April, but that could change. Thanks again for all the supportive comments, they are literally the copium that I keep sipping that helps me make these videos, and I'll see you guys next time.